Hey, welcome to On The Chain. This is Jeff here getting ready. I'm going in for the shock value. Why am I going in for the shock value? Because instead of going at 8.05, we're actually going at 5 to 8. I know it's a little bit uh, confusing for everybody out there. As you start logging in, you're like, what are these guys doing streaming early when they don't typically show up early? So I'm in early, might even end a little bit early. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But today, XRP. The future of lending. Why is my title off? It says the future or lending. It's supposed to be the future of lending. And guess what? I think it's game changing. Uh, the XRPL. We're going to get into that. What does that even mean? What does it mean where the XRPL uh, is actually has a native uh, situation that allows for lending? What? Say it ain't so. We're going to dive into that. And I also want to talk a little bit about the Biden economic revolution. Uh, it's happening everywhere, but guess what? Not in the U.S. because uh, the Biden economic revolution is all about pushing innovation outside of the U.S. and not keeping it inside the U.S. And we're going to get into that and talk a little bit about that. And also a big shout out to uh, the future senator of Massachusetts, uh, John Deaton. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on uh, with Don De John Deaton. I want to see what's what's happening over there. What kind of money is he getting? Who's getting behind him? Who's supporting him? Who wants to get rid of the current sitting senator of Massachusetts, Senator Elizabeth Warren? So we're going to talk a little bit about that. And as you guys jump in, uh, make sure you give a quick shout out to where you're tuning in from. And I'm looking forward to uh, getting this started and kicking this off because we're going to have a lot of fun today. We have a lot of great things to talk about. Uh, and I also want to talk, somebody uh, posted some comment on settlement, an XRP or a Ripple SEC settlement. We're going to talk about that. I might even kick that off with that one first, and we're going to dive right into the XRP future of lending. Don't worry about the title. Forget about the ors and the ofs because that's not as important. What's important is that we're all here together, and we're going to have a fun time today. So if you guys are ready to get started, Let's go. Welcome to On The Chain. Boom, boom. Welcome to On The Chain. How exciting is this? How exciting is this? Look at this. We've got Mark Smithson coming in from Reykjavik. Reykjavik, Iceland. Man, I'll tell you what. Reykjavik is a great place. I love it over there. If there's anybody uh, in uh, over there in Reykjavik, if you're in Iceland, Man, that's a lot of fun. I love it over there. Did the whole, we didn't do the whole loop. Kind of went down from Reykjavik, went south, started heading east, uh, turned around, and then went back up the west all the way to the northern tip of Iceland. And that was that was a lot of fun. I want to do that again. Next time I go, I'm going to go through the center roads. We're going to get an off-road vehicle, and we're going to go straight up the center of the country uh, and, and camp out in the middle and just have a lot of fun uh, doing that. But if you haven't been, highly recommend it. Appreciate that. Uh, we're all freaking yeah man it's beautiful it, it is actually kind of beautiful over here maybe you'll even get to see some uh, golf carts tooling around as as we're talking today there might be some might be able to see them through the little i was trying to get a perfect view i was sitting down below it would have been a perfect view right here there's a t right behind me but uh there was a perfect view kind of over to the side there but they're deconstructing there was a big uh event here a weekend ago uh for uh for live golf and they're deconstructing the whole uh, the whole situation over here. So it's getting a little bit loud, a little loud. You might even see some tractors and some other things uh, tooling around back here, not just golf carts. So I don't know if you guys can see the T uh, through the uh, the slots there. But all right, give a quick shout out to where you guys are uh, uh, tuning into and uh, tuning in from. I know where you're tuning in too because we're right here and we're tuning in. We're tuned in. So here, let's see. I'm gonna see how we can. Do this i'm hoping that uh, everything is going to share the way i want it to share we're running from one screen instead of multiple screens um, and so as we kind of go through this i get to find out which tabs i want and which order we're going to view these tabs in so here we go let's start with the first one i want to dive right in and i'm going to figure out how we're going to add this and we're going to share this and we're going to do all these great things and we're going to have fun and you, there might even be a special guest uh, joining us right uh, here in a little bit. So that would be really cool. Um, so here we go. Let me uh, let me add this to the stream. I want to comment on this first. We got Michigan in the house, which is really cool. Melt seven two five. What is going on? 
All right, so who else we got here? What are we going to talk about? Here's what I want to talk about. Uh, I want to get into this commentary. Now, I, we see a lot of this commentary. I'm not singling out the person posting it at all, uh, but the content of what's been uh, posted here, because we keep seeing this come up over and over and over. Really, for the past three years plus, uh, all we've heard is settlement, settlement, settlement. There's going to be a settlement. One of the things that Chip and I have discussed uh, to infinitum is no settlement. Uh, it goes to decision. We were right about it when it came to the outcome uh, for uh, the judge uh, Torres uh, final decision on XRP, right? And now as we're moving, so here, here's the question. So we see boom, right? We see a lot of these booms all over Twitter, um, kind of gets annoying after a little while, all these boom, 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 right? Big, big major decision coming. Final pre-trial conference coming up April 16th. Ripple makes major move, unlocks second batch of 500 million XRP from the escrow. Okay, great. Here's the comment, though. It seems like settlement is on the way. They're in a, in a pre-trial uh, conference. Settlement. So let me let me ask this question. Let me pose this question uh, to everybody out there. Uh, settlement. After three years, $200 million spent by Ripple. I don't know, $200 million plus spent by the SEC. So we're probably talking about maybe $400 million, maybe uh, – 600, I don't know how much money has been spent, but a ridiculous amount of money has actually been spent by uh, both parties. And so you're going to tell me after three years and maybe at least $400 million spent, that all of a sudden now there's going to be a settlement. All of a sudden now Gary Gensler is, is be going to become altruistic and he's going to sit down with uh, Brad Garlinghouse and the others and he's going to be like, hey, this is great. I want a settlement. Let's have a settlement right now. So here's the, the crazy you know, part about all of that. And, and you have, we have to look at it from a rational perspective and really have a good, really clear understanding that when you have two parties that are on opposite sides of, of, this, uh, of this ideology and this outcome and this dire, desire or drive uh, to a specific uh, direction uh, when it comes to this specific economic vehicle, uh, are you all of a sudden now after all this money was spent, are they going to sit down and have an actual settlement. And, and to me, you know, that's the big question. So you can't keep posting stuff all over Twitter with all these booms and all these like major developments when in fact, in truth, they might not really be uh, major developments at all uh, because we're just one more step in the direction. Maybe another 50 million or hundred million is gonna be spent. But you know, that, that's kind of my take on it. And you know, I just had to kind of put this back into some sort of a perspective because it, it kind of gets a little bit stale after a while, after three years. Uh, and that's and that's my commentary right there. Um, so what do we got? Ray, run, what is going on? You're listening on Rumble and YouTube. And guess who got who just joined us? What's Man, going on, guy, people? The guy with the long hair. <laughs> What's up? Man. Uh, the long hair hippie. Bedlam. <laughs> what is going on, co-host? Can you yeah. hear me okay? I can hear you loud and clear. All right, good. Loud and resolute beautiful look at this Woo. oh my god look at that look who's with man. us man it seems like crazy time we haven't crazy seen time. ship for like it's been like eight years i don't know eight years so or long. two weeks <laughs> or whatever two the weeks shortest, one or the other the shortest period of time was man yeah. tell you what what is going on went a little live pretty early today where's my coffee yeah i started i started five minutes early i was throwing everybody off That's and i wrong, said you man. know what everybody's like expects us at 805 810 i said you know what i'm gonna get in at five minutes before and it's gonna throw everybody mm -hmm. off thing is i might have to get off five minutes early <laughs> yeah well it's good to be so, back in the u.s again i'll tell you that oh yeah i was, was in, like uh, i was up in, in i was up in montreal and I had an amazing time there that's awesome some really good food in that city up. i'll tell you that those people know how to eat oh yeah they know how to yeah. make stuff and how to eat it was phenomenal what did you eat Oh, everything, man. Some just a, a little bit of everything. It was all it was all real good, good stuff. You know, it was like really, uh, very exciting, very uh, good stuff. So I that's that's about, you know, just uh, some good restaurants. I mean, really good stuff. I mean, what can I tell you? But I heard oh. you talking about the, uh, you know, it, it's you know I heard you talking about the uh, the settlement and stuff. It's just like I just want to get these oh. knuckleheads in the room, and I want to throat punch them all at the same time. It's like, listen, man. The problem is, is you got people in the space that just don't know any better that, you know, 
What was funny was yeah. I was on, um, I jumped into one of Crypto Hulk's about two weeks ago, one of his things, and I kept getting uh, censored. Uh, whatever I said in the, in the thing, it wasn't even anything derogatory or bad. All I said was, um, all I said was the, uh, the Easter Bunny at the uh, town mall was much more convincing than the uh, Easter Bunny down at the uh, Metro Mall. And I got, no, I'm just, just kidding. I, just, I didn't say that. But, but it was funny because uh, people were saying, uh, I kept getting censored. I kept putting in timeout. Then I, then, I got, then I got blocked. Then I came as a, like another one of my other personas and I got blocked. And I'm like, what, what's going on? Meanwhile, you know, secret documents and, uh, you know, the world reserve currency. And meanwhile, this guy's getting like, you know, two, three hundred dollars in, in, in uh, super chats. Crazy. We come it's on crazy. here and tell the truth, man. And what, what do we get? You know, we we, we, we get uh, grief from people going like, oh, stop <laughs> telling the truth. Start. That's right. Yeah. Stop. You and stop your truth. And stop, the truth and... <laughs> stop talking about the truth. We don't like that. We don't like the truth. We can't handle it. You can't handle the truth. Can't, you, can't, you can't handle the truth. Boom. It's, just, it's ridiculous, Jeff. I mean, it's like you know, but yeah, what are you gonna do, man? It's uh silly. <laughs> you're down there, it's, in, it's you're just, down there in Miami. Much, yeah. Down here in Miami. Are you in Durrell? Yeah, it might be. It might be. Look at this. Potentially, I might be. I don't know if you can see the golf course behind me, but if yeah, I can lift this up, by the way, Jeff, what, golf, what golf course is that? Damage. Look at that. Jeff, what what which golf course is that? that? Right there. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> What golf That's course is that, monster. by the way? That's the Blue Monster. What's the name of the club you're at, Jeff? <laughs> oh, it just so happens to be Trump. It's you Trump, better believe I've it. Been, Trump. I've been down there. Look at that. Look how beautiful that is. You guys see that? You see that? Gorgeous. I had to, Gorgeous. I had to take a picture. I had to take a picture and send it over to Matt. I had to represent for the, uh, for the resort over there. Uh, in australia so i took a hat a picture good morning, with the hat right in front of uh right in front of the uh yeah trump sign which is really cool oh yeah sure, so sure clickbait clickbait <laughs> clickbait that's what it is i'm so sick of the clickbait that's what it is <laughs> there we go free having free having party at jeff's mansion <laughs> yeah april that's 16th right, yeah. 7 to 12 a.m <laughs> Ooh, 7 p.m to 12. I like those hours. Valley parking, complimentary like beverages, proper attire. That's what I want to know. What the proper attire, attire. looks like. Proper attire is uh, t shirts. Three and Bitcoin. Shorts. It's a little heavy, Jeff. <laughs> three Bitcoin lie. at the door. <laughs> at the door. I like it. I'm in. You have I'm to, in. You'll, ha you'll have to wait an hour until it processes, but don't worry. Yeah. As long as we see that it's been received, you'll be good. <laughs> you, can <imagine. laughs> yeah. you can't leave it's the like, it's, I hit it's one send. Bitcoin at the door. <laughs> Did you get it yet, Jeff? Did you get it yet? Did you get yeah. it? Did you get it? Did you get it? No, yeah. it's like yeah. I haven't gotten it no, yet. We're gonna, it yet. Yeah, we're gonna do it in Ethereum. So we're gonna charge uh twenty five dollar entry fee and it's gonna be a hundred dollars in fees. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I like I like the sound of that. Come on man. in. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> yeah. Come on in. Hey, are you, are you making are you making What's jokes, that? Jeff? Yeah, you're making jokes. Come on some, in. Gotta have fun. Sounds like you're making some <laughs> jokes there, Jeff. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. And who else is in here today? Clickbait. That's all it is. Well, we do clickbait oh, too, yeah. but but people just they start commenting on it. I'm like, no, we're, we we laugh about it. We have a little fun with it. You know, it's a joke. Could <laughs> I, Mike? Could I? Yeah, kind of staggering. What do we have here? <laughs> Reykjavik. Oh, Reykjavik's in. Spark Smith is from Reykjavik. Yeah, Reykjavik. Reykjavik. <laughs> it's all over the world. This guy. <laughs> All over here, yeah, we're talking about Reykjavik. Bondi Beach, place. Scotty Mometa. There you right. go, Bondi Beach, baby. Matt. So, uh, yeah, Matt, we're diving in. So, I've talked about the fun part with the booms and all that other uh stuff and the settlement, settlement chip, settlement well, after three years, 400 yeah, million dollars well, at least spent. And they're going to be like, hey, you know what? Let's let's settle. <laughs> Yeah, let's uh, let's on. settle with the uh, agency that thinks everything you know. If if it's a hammer, everything's a nail. Let's smack everything right. Sure, that, that makes sense. Uh, understand that this is mandated by the court, right? They tell you to get together and have a conversation. Probably one of those stare offs where Garling House is like this, and first one to blink, yeah, and right like this, and you know, it's like you know that stare off <laughs> where you can't blink and your eyes start watering. And you're like. Mm -hmm. And I always do this to end it. You just smack your hand and the person automatically. That's how I used to do my brother. It's like, he blinked. Did not. That's how it happens. Uh, you guys so got tricked. 
by starting the show on time. I didn't start it on time. I was I joined oh. late. I was like, man, it was already started. Warp speed two well, X to get to the real time. Be there well, in three I've or four minutes. For you? I didn't get it. Yeah, dude. I I, te- I texted you. I said I was logging in. And then I, I know, sent but you out. I couldn't get in, but I didn't get you. There. Well, you got a code, and then I was able to get I the know, code. I know, but it didn't come over. I didn't get it. But you got in. No, I didn't. In. I had to try another way. Oh, I can't get in. dude! No, Newcastle that, is two zero on the Spurs. That was fast. The game just started. Holy cow! Two zero over the Spurs. Um, what the heck's going let's on? see. I don't know. For some reason, I can't get in here. I don't know what the deal is. Uh, <laughs> what are you trying to log into? I'm trying to log into our uh, to our YouTube channel. Oh, I'm not able to YouTube. get in. That's weird. I'm not getting notification. <laughs> I should get a notification. I did not Take get one. F, yes. All right, try this. Check your oh, Galaxy no, I got one S20. Now. I just got it. I just got it. There you go. Okay. Boom. What's the number? Two seven. There you go. All right. It's going in right now. Yeah. Fancy stuff. Well, now it says now you gotta <laughs> now you gotta click the other number, 75. <laughs> what the hell, man? Oh. <laughs> Google's on fire. How how many numbers do I get to click? How many verifications do you have to do? Well, they, they I think we just got another new. verification. No, that's good. I Someone's trying to change the YouTube channel. Did you see you that have... picture that I sent you before? Yeah, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that, that funny? funny. <laughs> it took me a good. while. It's like, if you look long enough, I'm like, what am I looking at? I'm zooming in all over the place. Yeah, well. And I decided to read the small It took print. me about, well, <laughs> as soon as I saw that, I started, I scoped around the outside and found it right away. But I was like, yeah. It was... Oh, dude. <laughs> But yeah, because of, because of what it said, if you look long enough, I knew it was a I knew it was one of these uh, jokes. Right. Oh yeah, that's I was looking for something funny. I knew it was you know, a joke. Found Jeff, it. I knew it. Yeah, it was a joke. It. it was very yeah. funny. It was a very funny joke. <laughs> it was good. It was. Uh, <laughs> All right. I gotta stop the screen. I was, was gonna a get one. Old. Gotta present one. So the the big thing to talk about today, Chip, to dive right into it. And there's other some other good stuff about money that John Deaton is getting everything. But the big thing to talk about is this Ripple X, you know, Ripple X or the XRPL. There's some big news over there. Um, David Schwartz commented on it, which is all right. Uh, but really I'm trying to find the, uh, here we go. I think this is the one. Let me see. No, forward. this isn't it. That's not the right one. Got to find was the it right a ripple, Oh, you know what? I can just go like that. I'll go to share this tab instead. There we go. That's how I roll. Yeah, it's the Ripple X. There it is right here. Boom. This goes goes down into multiple, multiple things. I was looking at this. I say, you know what? It's about time that they, they introduce this proposal and they start using the full capabilities of of the uh the ledger and look into all the you know the the full decks and so i'm looking at you know what the ripple x uh devs are talking about here and they so we have this introduction of a proposal for a native lending protocol on the xrpl and so here the objective as they posted would ex- further expand its DeFi capabilities and they really get to, you know breaking it down what it means for the ecosystem you know what's interesting over all of this stuff is that we have all this amazing native technology baked into the XRPL and it's been, and it's been relative, relatively untapped for all these years. Like they talk about it, you see what RippleNet's doing, but now we're starting to see how the DEX is going to be uh, fully utilized. And to this point, so they want to, and there's just a proposal, obviously nothing has really rolled out. We also don't have full smart contracts yet on the XRPL, which would be nice. Uh, But here you have the proposed lending protocol would empower users to borrow and lend digital assets directly, fostering financial inclusion, transparency, and efficiency without unnecessary intermediaries. What do you think about this? You know, there's a whole bunch of points here, but just this idea, this notion of being able to utilize the native uh, technology within the XRPL to actually do something uh, to develop. I think without smart con- without smart yeah. contracts, you're DOA. That's what I think personally. Mm. That's what I think. Yeah. So there's nothing more important than smart contracts, and having to put on a side chain doesn't right. make really a lot of sense. So uh, anything you do doesn't it doesn't right. really matter at this point. The fact that they were first on the scene in 2013 talking about smart contracts and Ethereum did it, 
just goes to show you where, where all the devs went and tells, shows you where all the, the, the devs are leaving the XRPL at best. And the reason they're doing that is because uh, Ripple basically blocked um, yeah. blocked the uh, the amendment for the smart contracts on the, uh, so it's not really decentralized, it's centralized control. Um, they, they say like, oh, well, they, you know, they, 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 the nodes can vote on it. All right, well, where's the smart contract amendment? Why, and why did it have to go to a side chain? You think I'd love to see went... a full functionality of a, of a smart contract. I mean, I don't know. I don't get that excited about this. I mean, it, yeah, I think it's, I think it's good, but I don't, to me, it's like, if you don't think about smart contracts first and using side chains for smart contracts, it's just, yeah, it's just a band aid, man. It's not, it's, you're not going to give that full functionality. It's you're just not going to, there's kind of more so the much. Same. Yeah, it's more the same. It's like, you know, the XRPL is really phen phenomenal, right? And it has so many advantages, especially the native DEX, which is one of its key features, the very first one. But to me, it's it's like, you got to stop messing around with these side chains, man. Just like make it native, okay? And if you don't want to make it native, then what's the point? You know, I mean, yeah. I, I, what, it, what it tells me is what it tells me that like Flare, everything Flare's done and, and, and the uh, genesis and evolution of Flare has been really well thought out. A lot of people gave him a lot of flack for doing the, you know, the, uh, you know, Songbird and they wanted to do a test net and they did it the right way. This is how you do it. And meanwhile, we get, this last proposal went through and oh oops 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 we had a we had some we had a bug in there it's like that's why you need to test it and break it and see what you can do to do yeah. it and I, so i just think it just gives me really bullish on like like projects like flare because i think that the way they're looking at it and the way they're thinking about it is is the is the right way and uh you know no no knock to reach team but he had to go do what he had to do but i mean i think everybody would like native functionality i think this is good but again i just great. i'm not that excited about it. i don't know are you excited about it jeff yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to the point that people are, are talking about a uh, new protocol uh, or how to utilize the protocol um, adjusting. Uh, it's a matter of whether or not it, you know, it will actually pass, whether or not they can actually do something with it. Uh, but to that point, you know, all of all of this uh, is just uh, could just be hyperbole, you know, until it actually comes to functionality. Mm -hmm. um, but then when you have you bring up Flare and I and I think that's a really important example, you know, there's a, a group that, you know, started to actually build with the objective of being uh, cross chain and, you know, introducing uh, smart contracts, but smart contracts that would utilize uh, multiple different chains, multiple different assets. I think that the, the Ripple X is a little bit late to the game and, and continuously trying to play catch up uh, considering uh, where Ethereum sits today. Um, I, but we're still relatively new. So if they can get these passed, like you, 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 you know, brought up, and I think it's really critical, smart contracts on the XRPL are critical going to a side chain, you know, probably, you know, not the, not the best, uh, scenario. Um, but you know, but here again, here they're, they're talking about, you know, for the key features here, liquidity providers, deposit fungible tokens. And they're looking at XRP, but wrap BTC, wrap DTS, ETH, et cetera. They want to put it into a lending. I don't know if I like, you know, the full concept of uh, these. Uh, and I guess it helps with the, the liquidity. But does the XRPL actually have to uh, be a lending pool specifically? Do we need the inflows of capital uh, going into the XRPL? But how is that actually going to function? Where's, where's the, uh, you still need to have, uh, a mechanism uh, there has to be something built out it can't just it, granted the technology is native uh, within the xrpl but you need a, a an entity like a flare uh, you you have to have some sort of uh of uh, centralized exchange to help manage uh, the development of this you know of whatever platform you're going to end up using uh, to start putting money into these or moving uh, asset capital into these lending pools I, I don't know. You know, I'm looking at. I think it, overall, it's a positive. I like the. No, direction I think it's a positive for sure. I do think it's a positive. Don't get me wrong. I do think it's great. I mean, I think any more Just, development and building is good. But Jim D brings up a good point. He goes, "How cool an idea to embed native lending against XRP assets and DeFi. We can just be like the ultra wealthy and not have income tax by borrowing back our own assets to buy stuff with." <laughs> there you go. Right. I mean, it, it's, it's awesome. really. But this is really well thought out in terms of how they're breaking it down. Uh, you know, here's the lending pool enables fixed term, fixed term loans. 
maybe it'd be short-term loans with preset terms for interest accruing loans. It bypassed the need for collateral by using off-chain underwriting risk management. What could go and wrong? First loss capital protection, <laughs> right? Yeah, what could go? You still need, if you're going to have underwriting, you're going to have, you're going to somehow have some risk management. You have to have a centralized system. I don't think you can go full DeFi on this yet. Uh, there has to be some mechanism that's built uh, in order to then mitigate risk. So if you want to have true risk management, someone has to qualify. There has to be a qualifier uh, for those loans. But I like if we can move in a direction where the capital markets, uh, the liquidity aspect of it, we talk a lot about, you know, spending your crypto uh, for for retail purchase or ha or using a credit card. And we talk about really we don't need a functionality of how we spend our money uh, because we have credit cards. I would like to be able to see the credit card uh, with the digital asset somehow as the liquidity pool or the treasury of the credit card company is using crypto asset and blockchain technology. Uh, it trims down that the overall uh, anchor uh, that is typically the labor uh, that is required on the to maintain the back end of these credit card companies, which is why from a business perspective, they have to charge three to 4% uh, on a purchase. But if you can kind of take away a lot of that infrastructure, but yet you still have a Visa, MasterCard, American Express, et cetera, maybe somebody else comes new to the scene uh, because of you know the blockchain and someone's focused on how do we provide credit cards with a blockchain-based credit card company. Uh, and then from a, from a business perspective to charge retail maybe it's a half a percent because most of it's going to be happening within the DeFi instead of having the whole fat uh infrastructure that you have to maintain that's that's kind of the direction i, I would like to see things move in i don't want to spend my crypto assets people you know and, and it kills me that the people keep talking about fast movement of money for retail uh purchase using crypto asset i want to use a credit card you know and i i don't want to I don't want to carry a balance, but I don't want to use my capital to buy anything either. Yeah, I agree with that. So, <laughs> so yeah, loans. So what? So what, what's the next thing? What's the next panel there? Uh, what after else numbers, is here? What number six? Here? Oh, yeah, loans. Loans are managed to a new loan ledger object. So here you have loan financing withdrawals, payment amounts, schedules, interest, and principal payments. Loan default recovery. You said loan default recovery. You're going to have to have. That means you, you're going to have to have some infrastructure. That means someone's going to have to chase down after the, the default on the loan. You have to have a recovery. So then you have to have a collection pool. And then you have to have individuals, people that are going out uh, for that recovery, I would think. To align incentives and in managing risk, pool delegates can provide first loss capital to cover potential defaults, which protects liquidity providers through a liquidation mechanism. Uh, let's see for it's developers glad, and protocols modular design extensibility make it easy to build and integrate this is the important let make it easy make it easy to build the d apps uh and and actually utilize the technology yeah i'm so it's I'm, I, it's, I, you know. it's, well they're super excited about it i mean i'm not <clears throat> i don't know i mean it's just like okay it's great it's uh, any kind of development's fantastic but you know i don't know is it that it's not really earth shattering. I mean, if a proposal. I think it was a smart contract, oh, it is, it's be, a proposal at this point. Yeah, I don't think it'll even go anywhere. To be honest, it, it could, but there's a lot of proposals that come out that I don't know. I don't know if it'll gain any traction. We'll, we'll have to see, Jeff. Yeah. We'll have to see if it, um, it. you know, if if it, if it any if it goes anywhere, it'd be interesting. But you know, the other thing too. Now this, now I think this is something that Ripple X has done. That's a really good move here, which is they used to have the XRPL grants program where they would come out, they'd open up a window and they'd say, Hey, you have to, you have from this time to this time to be able to apply. So now what they've done is they've opened up the program where the application will be processed on a rolling basis. So if you got a project and the other thing that I wasn't, I, I kind of see what they were doing. They were trying to like stimulate the, the community or, you know, developers to have like a, a certain sort of a, a category. Like it was like, okay, now we're going to open it up, but now we're looking for, you know, something along this line. And instead of like pigeonholing the idea into their window that was open, they're doing the right thing. Like this, I think, is a big move by Ripple. And I think what they're doing is I think they're listening to the community. They are listening because you don't make a move like this if you're not paying attention to say like, hey, people have been shut down these programs. A lot of times it didn't fit the category. A lot of times it wasn't, you know, for whatever reason, it wasn't right. And don't think that Ripple, they they choose people that 
are the ones that are actually going to, you know, they got a panel of four or five people and they choose the projects, right? The people think, oh, Ripple's shutting them down. It's not Ripple. It's it's, an, it's some other, there may be one, one person from there, but I think the panels that I've seen are just outside people who are choosing it. But this whole idea of rolling innovation and what they say here, Jeff, is meaning more innovation on the XRP ledger. Check out our next info session. So what they're doing is they're hiring, they're, they're having this info session here, which is going to be on April 23rd. 2024 um it's uh just the information on how this is going to work now i hope they record it because it'd be nice to kind of like maybe pick some p pieces out of this so it'll be a q a and how you apply and uh, you basically can go ahead and, and register for this webinar so what i'll do is i will drop this in there if anybody's interested in and in signing up first last oh, and go. an email so i threw that link in there um, so you guys if you want there you go go on yeah, I think it's a good idea, Jeff. I mean, like, That'll so this really is good. this is Ripple paying attention and listening to the community and saying, look, whatever your idea is, let's not try to tell you this is the idea. And you go to try to sit in, in what was happening is a lot of people were writing grants to try to make it fit in that sort of box. Now it's like, hey, you got an idea. It's a rolling basis. You can go ahead and apply. And it also kind of tells me that probably weren't getting enough submissions either. That could have been the other other reason, but it does seem like Ripple X is listening, and it's good. I mean, look, you know, like I said, like there's going to be things they do that we like, and things they do that maybe we don't like so much. But that's okay, you know, it's okay. It's like you don't, you still have to have your mission. You still have to do what you have to do. It's like people, some people like the show, some people don't. Jeff, it's okay. It's like they don't have to, but you want to give your honest opinion. You don't want to be a total fan. Well, everything to do is great, 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 great. Everything we do is not great. Every it's pretty good, but it's not great. But uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? it's like you, great. well, that's true, great. Jeff. If you now you say now you say it like that, it does sound pretty awesome. But I'm just saying that from a standpoint of where we're going to critique it, we're going to have you know right. we're going to say like, hey, we like this Gotta bit of it, but it's just our opinion, man. It's just two guys in a podcast that have an opinion. That's all. That doesn't make it good or bad. Yeah. You know, yesterday I wrote back to somebody and I said I, I had made a comment. And um, I had talked about Rage Against the Machine. Somebody recreated Rage Against the Machine. Every single detail, like every mic setup, and it was just it was it was amazing the amount of detail they went through to re recreate this sort of Rage sort of uh, Against the Machine sound. And all I said was, I really was a big fan of Rage Against the Machine. They stood up to authority back in the day, and then they went from Raging Against the Machine to joining the machine. And then that person wanted some clarification <laughs> on it. <laughs> he wanted a little <laughs> clarification on it. I'm like, he was like, <laughs> oh, geez, what do you mean? What do you mean, clarification? So I, I just said, well, they, yeah, I mean, they went from, you know, you know, raging against authority and calling people out for stupidity and politicians and everything. And then they became the machine. Guy. There, you want you couldn't go to their that's concert, right. Jeff, unless you had a vax. So, you know, you, you, that's they right. had to check your like vax. I'm like, dude, that's not freedom. That's centralized <laughs> control. You know, I mean, freedom. And they I embraced just, all it I all on, too. Right. All I said was, you know, freedom and decentralization is the new punk rock. That's it. That's the new punk right. rock. That's you, you want to rage. Yeah. That's where it is. I mean, you guys, you guys are in the wrong category. They're just sitting there trying to. Who's that? Is that Malay? That's who. Musk? Yeah, that's who's embracing freedom. Look at that. Elon Musk and Malay together. How cool is that picture? Jeff, I got to tell you something. So when I was up in Canada, so I, I would randomly ask people that I would sort of like run into or I'd be like at the Starbucks and I would just ask random people. And this is insane. I go like, so this is Montreal. Because I say like, hey, hey out of curiosity, um, hey, what are your thoughts about Justin Trudeau? Hate the guy. Mm -hmm. It was universal. No, <laughs> not one person that I asked from all walks of life, man, you know. Not one person said and yep. said, I don't care for him. I don't like no, him. I don't nobody like Nobody wants him there. Nobody wants him there, Jeff. Nobody wants him. Nobody cares for him. And then I brought up uh, Pierre Polivari. He goes, oh, God, I Maybe. love that guy. Yeah, he's my hero. Yeah, he's he would be, you know. So then, because I just wanted to get their take on it. I didn't say pro account. I was like, hey, what's your opinion? Like, what do you think of the guy? Do you like him? You know, they was like, yeah. nobody liked him. I saw this one guy, and uh, he was a server in a restaurant, and he went off on a big tirade. He was just like, you know, they're destroying our country. We can't, you know, I can't, can't do anything. And he was very, like, chill. And then all of a sudden, he opened up, man. He was unleashed, and he got the gloves on, man. And he took them off and was boxing. He was, like, going nuts. Well, one after That's another, it. they're destroying the country. They're destroying it real fast. And it's scary because they're on our northern border, <laughs> you know. So we're being infiltrated from our southern border. And then 
we have the potential of a communist country on our northern border. And I feel real bad for the Canadians up there because, you know, they're they're in such a bad predicament uh, with their parliamentary system. You know, so hopefully they can get rid of him. Hopefully they can get rid of him before, you know, he hasn't done excessive damage to their country that they, you know, can't turn come back from. Uh, but we saw so much. Uh, but it's good to hear that the people, you know, are, are willing to stand up. Hopefully they're willing to stand up or maybe they're just sitting there quietly until you ask the question. You know, wonder what they're saying. Kind of that's what they're saying, kind of behind closed doors. Hopefully they're getting it together as large groups and they'll be able to oust, uh, you know, this uh, prime minister. Horrible. He's trying to be a yeah, king just, more than a prime I was minister. I'm just curious what people thought. You know, I was just like trying to see, like, you know, what the, you know, what was the, what was yeah, the going, it's good. um, it's good to you hear. know, sort of like prevailing. And it was like, and I, and I was, I couldn't find. I was just like looking at that point. I was looking for somebody that would be like, yes, I, I'm a big fan, or but nobody, <laughs> nobody was. And it's yeah. like, and, and why is some random love dude asking me this on. shit? Like, love who is this guy? Here in Canada, it was weird. Like, why are you? Why is this guy asking me this stuff? Like, you know, I just thought. Like from from out of, out of nowhere, you know, it's, it's like a random it's a very dude. uh the random dude from the some, U.S. Yeah, yeah, some random guy <laughs> just like asking all these questions, like why? What are you? What are you trying to? What are you getting at? And I was like, ah, I'm just curious, just just a just a just a curious thing. Um, what I was looking for, Jeff, and I don't know that I can find it. Oh, man, oh man, um, I was looking for the John Deaton and how much he raised. He outraised uh, Warren. Do you do you have those figures? I did have it somewhere, but I don't know where it is. I don't have I don't have the exact uh, numbers in front of me. But hey, you know, uh, here's I'm going to put this up. This is as you're looking for that. Finally, finally, after all this time, uh, you know who's fighting back, and it's just it's taken way too long to see some fight back here. And oh, I have the video uh, for that. Yeah, I have the video for that. Stuff, so... Yeah, yeah. Let me load. Let, let me load. So yeah, let's... play it because I can't play on my end. Yeah, I'll um I'll load the video for that, but but it's just but the like, funniest like part about finally, you know, it just took so long. Well, I thought the other part of that that was really funny was uh was was the comment. The comment was really funny. It's like uh wait, that's the wrong one. That's yours. Let me go mine here. The uh, comment, I laughed. I uh, this actually made me laugh out loud. He said, "The pathetic low lives to the pathetic low lives who try to use my oh, or Ripple's likeness to scam right. innocent folks out of their crypto. <laughs> we see you. We're fighting back." I like that pathetic yep. low lives. Like it's very un it. rare you see a CEO refer to somebody as a pathetic <laughs> low life. And I was like, you know, I mean, like that's <laughs> that's some that's some anger shining. But it's horrible like, what they've been doing. Airdrops. Yeah, XRP airdrops. Well, drops. even in that. With Even the, in that post, the, the, the and then they stream those live. Too it's many. Scammers. So weird, and then they, they take they take it's you know they do the AI stuff, and but this is it right here. It's kind of mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to Ripple to be able to poke some fun at itself, and I, I love the take on this, and I think it's the right take. It's not preachy. It's it, 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 using comedy to make a point, but let's let's play it and let's uh, comment on it after we watch it. Yeah. I like it in the oh, hi, I'm Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple. Hi, I'm Brad Garlinghouse, C CEO of Ripple. No, you're not. Big wins at the XRP giveaway. Link in bio. Look, this guy is obviously a scam. There's no XRP giveaway. Send us 500 XRP and we'll send you double back. Congratulations, XRP holders. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ripple will never ask you to send us XRP. Send me your wallet address and we will give you all the XRP. Okay, that's enough, buddy. I'm recording. Give you all the exit. Big, big, big wins, wins, wins at the exit, the exit, the exit. At least I got my hair right. <laughs> Stay aware. Stay safe. Thank God, so, but it's taken so long. It's taken so long for them to to post that. You know, think about all the all the time on YouTube and on Twitter and now on X. With, yeah, show, you know, show BZ, show BZ your uh, what's behind you oh, there, yeah, so you can check see. It. Check it out. Look at that. That's Look how beautiful Trump that Durrell is. Golf that. Course, my friend. What I'm talking about right there. Right, yeah. Right on the. What right I, on the what, hole. I, what I like yeah. about that is like, yeah, you're right on the golf course, which is really nice. That, that all backs up. It's really very sweet. I've been down there. It's very good. Good morning from Tampa Bay area. Lou, oh, there's the, uh, in the house. The, uh, 
that the send private eight uh, ETH and I'll send you back private three club free right there. The Trump private club right over there. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, I love that club. Sitting it's a very uh, it's beautiful here. I was downstairs. Really so I found a beautiful spot downstairs. Then they had music blaring. Then they're taking apart the the live stage for live golf. They had a tournament last weekend. It was very cool. Yeah, then also Garling House too, you know, making the rounds, doing some other stuff too. He was also at uh, Paris uh, Blockchain Week, which mm -hmm. I heard a little bit of coverage of that, but it was, uh, I'd like to actually see the conversation. Yeah, we got some stuff there too. That'd be good. I like that. He joined XRPL Commons CEO David uh, Sheary on stage to discuss why Ripple is planning to launch a USD stablecoin later this year, growing the mm -hmm. XRPL community. And yep. crypto regulation, of course, of course and friends, of course, of course of with course. the exclamation point. Of course, of course, that's going to happen. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, why and why wouldn't it? I mean, let's let's be honest. Why wouldn't why wouldn't it? It's a perfect sort of a thing. Um, there you go. Don said Ripple did sue YouTube years ago and attempt oh, yeah. attempt to stop the scams. Scams. Yeah, but that's YouTube. YouTube doesn't stop any scams. They love the scams. Okay. Well, what I laugh about is like these. Like, so you think about their AI, right? They have their own AI. It was called Bard, and now it's called, I don't know what it's called, Galaxy. I don't know, something else. Something that doesn't work. George is saying, today, guys, send, you send anything me your right. XRP. I won't send anything. he's right. honest. George is <laughs> honest. Thanks. Let's, I feel like sending him some just because he's honest, right? He feels like just because just he's honest. Jackie though, right? over here hanging out in North Carolina. NC. What's going sunny, on in NC? Sunny North Carolina. Sunny like, dude, North it's Carolina. Actually, it's cold here. I don't know why it's so cold. It says it's 67, but I feel like it's like 50. Because it's windy, Jeff. That's probably why. But it, yeah, but it's beautiful. They have like a 60, it was 65 earlier, but they have that for the morning. What time is it? It's 8.30 and it's still cold. What a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, awesome. Jeff. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you beautiful be mine? Day. Won't you be my neighbor? Jeez, a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little bit of Mr. Rogers in the morning. Who knew? <laughs> It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> a beautiful day in the neighborhood. What was the train called? Let's go to, I don't remember the, what was, was the, the land called? Show, I used to like, I don't know. I feel somehow I ended up having to watch that show for some reason. It was like, I oh, thought yeah. it was so boring. I was like, it was like, like the, the lamest train. attempt at the TV. train would come and he would talk to the train. Then they would go back into the village, into the kingdom of whatever. It was a land of make-believe. Is, is that what it was but called? The, with the bad king cool. puppet. It was like a yeah, king yeah. puppet. The king puppet. And, and he had the same voice right. as uh, Mr. Rogers. Hi, I'm Mr. Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the king. I'm like, no, it's not. It's Mr. Rogers' voice. Come on. This is pathetic. The I like how he'd come in. He'd, he'd put his sweater on and he'd change his shoes when he came in the house. Like <laughs> he had his indoor outfit on, take off his sport coat, put on the sweater on his, yeah, I never, uh, his house. I never, sweater. I never understood, understood that, that old. No. <laughs> You imagine doing that now do you put on different shoes when you I take off my shoe and that's it i'm not putting different shoes on definitely not yeah. putting a sweater on yeah it's very funny uh. <laughs> andrew said how annoying are the gap the eth gas refund ads on x maybe if you have the blue tick you don't see them i don't know i see them i see them all I want I see some refunds give me some eth refunds yeah, because that's so believable, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> so uh, so Ron Hammond posted something talking about how the uh, the Treasury went on the squawk box to talk about their concerns of offshore issuers of stable coins. I find it interesting that there's all this conversation right now going on about uh, all this. Everything's moving offshore, and so Ron was saying it, uh, it's the actions of the SEC that's moving firms offshore. Uh, thus making the treasury's objectives harder to attain and so that was kind of in the title of uh of today's video biden the biden economic revolution chip i'm, I'm loving the biden economic revolution it's all about pushing all of our innovation offshore it's amazing isn't it isn't it fantastic <laughs> everything, everything is like here you go we don't want it here why would we want this great innovation here in this country and keep no. it here and make sure that we develop well, the technology here and Party that's anti-business, Jeff. They're anti bit they're anti-crypto, they're anti-everything. But you know what they're not anti? Censorship and control. That they're all in they on, love right? That part. That, oh, yeah. That part they're, they're, all they're in, cool. 100%. There you so go. So this how you like this headline. Crypto lawyer John Deaton is outraising Elizabeth Warren in an election campaign. 
Um, as reported by Eleanor, that's what it was. Eleanor Terra to Fox Business, the lawyer turned Senate hopeful, raised million, raised um, 1.36 million for his campaign in Q1. His goal oh, was 1 million. Here we Boom! Go. Compared to one point, Warren only raised 1.1. According to his campaign, Deaton received donations from prominent figures in the crypto industry, such as wow, Ripple execs so Brad Klinkhoff, Chris Larson, Cameron Tyler Winklevoss, Charles Hoskinson, Jameson Lopp, Anthony Scaramucci, and Tara wrote an X on Friday. According to the Politico, donors, including Gar- Garlinghouse, Larson, Scaramucci, and the yeah. Winklevoss, put down the max donations of $6,600 for his campaign. That's weird. I, I, I used to think it was $3,300, but it must have doubled it on huh? $6,600 <laughs> more. But that's it right there. I saw that was the tweet that I was looking for, but I found the story instead. That's, but that's significant, Jeff. Perfect. That's significant. Now that that requires boom. a boom. Got to get those. Boom. Someone put a tweet up that says boom. That is a boom right there. You know, one point three six million raised over Elizabeth Warren, who is sluggishly trying to, you know, take them on now. She's done. She is finished. The crypto Let's industry has spoken. Let's not forget, Jeff, also that, you know, John ponied up a half of a million dollars of his own money just to get the, the campaign started. That's that's, right. that's and he went into Massachusetts and bought a house. Right. You need a residence in that's the right. state that you're that's running. Too. So he went in and bought a house as well. There's a serious commitment on John Deaton. Yeah. And it was great because, you know, Jeff and I got to have some time with John Deaton when we were in Australia two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago and sit down. We were talking about the campaign, talking about the strategy. It was great because, you know, when I had met him at the private, you know, the the Ripple party, it was like it was too much going on. You said hi, and that was it. This was more private. We got to have a little more of a conversation. We got to talk about stuff, got to hear from John, you know, talk about the campaign, talk about what he's working on, what he's doing. And, you know, the stuff that he basically has been putting out on social, but it was just nice to get it right from the horse's mouth. And what, what was sad was we really should have done a um, you know, next year what we'll do is we'll we'll be set up for interviews. We'll do all interviews and we'll air those interviews. We were, not that we had time to sit down and do interviews, but to invite people, you know, at the end of the day where we would have had some breakaway time to do interviews and bring good audio equipment with us, sit down. That would have been great. It would have been the perfect opportunity. But love to see, you know, when uh, John Deaton actually becomes Senator Deaton, uh, having him on the show as uh the senator of Massachusetts, that'll be great. So, look at this. I mean, you look at the 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 powerhouses that are getting behind him. You're going to start seeing uh, traditional industry also, you know, flocking behind him. Yeah, He's I hit the numbers that he has to hit. the The Republican Party is going to uh, is definitely going to coalesce behind him as well because he's hit the numbers. He's proven that he can attract big money. He's proven that he can attract big names, and now the sky's the limit. And Elizabeth Warren is done; she's finished. She, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be amazing uh, to watch uh, the Ooh. undoing. This is kind of interesting here, Jeff, because it's not just the crypto proponents pumping up Deaton's uh, campaign; yep, it's also allies and supporters. So the former Republican governor Charlie Baker is also his oh, advisor. Big. Yeah. Okay. Big. So a lot of people who are big fans of that and and of. So, I, I mean, some of the stats that John shared with us, he, what, what's amazing is his mind is like razor sharp. He had like, he knows the exact percentages of voters that are actually registered, who actually votes. Like he's yep. got all the goods, which tells me that he's doing some serious internal polling to find out yep. where, where people are, where, you know, meeting them where they're at. Yep. Mike Kennedy, Baker's housing and economic development secretary, maxed out to Deaton's uh, victory. Longtime Baker donor Holt Massey mm-hmm. also contributed to the that. joint fundraising community. While mm-hmm. Daniel Kraft, Nancy Keller, uh, Dan Winslow, who knows a thing or two about running for U.S. Senate. There you go right there. Uh, right, chipped yep. into the campaign direct per Deaton's team. See, this is what I thought. This powerful. was I see it here. It says the maximum was 3,300. And that's what I thought it was. That's why I, th- I was well, confused. From both. So, Oh, 6,600. Because it's thirty three hundred per for an individual for a contribution. That's your max. See, it received yeah. maximum donation of sixty six hundred a piece, half, half of the for primary. the primary. Oh, that's what it was. General. So they're gotcha. splitting, right? They're right. The they're primary maxing, and the general. They're maxing out the total amount for the primary. That was important to say that, yeah, because I was yeah. like, it's thirty three hundred, and um, that makes a lot right. of sense. But you can see now the organization that that not only 
Ripple put together, Ripple, but also Coinbase. And also you had the uh, AZ um, uh, Andreessen Horowitz also put together a, a super PAC. Now, super PACs can donate a lot more. You know, they're a, it's a PAC, P-A-C stands for Political Action Committee. And those can actually donate a lot more money. And what's interesting, Jeff, is that they were supporting Adam Schiff. And they're like, we're not yeah, partisan. Totally partisan. If you're not going to get behind the one guy, it's going to take out the biggest grifter on the planet, the biggest hater of crypto and influencer that gives Gary Gensler the question. You're not going to take him out. You're a scam organization. But they got they got behind him. I think they're also supporting Deaton, aren't they? I don't know. I haven't heard anything. I haven't seen anything official yet. I'd love to so see we got, it. We got to see something official. But if you're gonna if you're gonna support at uh, if you're gonna support Schiff, I don't know how you can support the other side. You're basically siding with the enemy. You're basically saying that we're gonna support this guy, even though he's in cahoots with the rest of the the party. Right? He's not gonna do anything that would be contrary to Elizabeth Warren and and the others. So he's gonna vote along party lines. He's gonna crush any positive legislation that is crypto related. And when you dig into it. He's had zero positive impact on crypto mm. over the year. He made one Perfect. statement, official statement that said that he supported crypto. And he got a million all, bucks. And then that's what they and that's what they they focused in on was the one he's like, oh, this is so we have to support innovation. And it was kind of baked into some of the other things he said, but he's never said anything like that before. He's never brought up crypto. There's no news clips. There's no uh, expos. There's nothing that said that he was a big proponent of uh of crypto prior to uh, that one statement. So how do you take somebody right. like that and all of a sudden put, because you're putting money behind it because you support the rest of his uh, political allegiance. And that's it. It had nothing to do with the crypto. So it's good. It's kind of pathetic that they would uh, get behind somebody like that, especially when uh, the person taking them on would probably be, you know, positive and pro crypto. So that's the joke. That's the big joke. So you, you have to do it from the grassroots. You can't always, uh, can't always rely on these uh, these big entities. I'm looking down. There's a bee at my feet, and then I realize he's dead. Thought he was crawling over here trying to, to bite me or something. A bee is gonna. Saw the coolest thing. I don't know. He's like right here, hanging out at my feet. I look down. And it's like this huge bee just sitting there. He probably died because it's so cold out here. He probably froze to death in this 67 degree weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cold. It's so funny. It's windy and I'm in the shade. <laughs> it's 67. It's cold, cold. It's it's freezing. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> so just, I'm trying to find out. Um I'm trying to find him. I'm at Fair Shake right now. That's the that's the one that but I don't see any I don't see any support for John Dean. They raised seventy eight million dollars. They gave Schiff a million something and yeah, against that it, Katie. It's so pathetic. And she was, and she was a loser. I mean, she listen. She was never gonna. This lady was never gonna. She wasn't raising money. No, she wasn't raising money. She, it was a sham election. I mean, come on. No. Yeah, yeah. That's had what they Adam. do. They put shams in there to keep propping them up. Well, I tried to. I tried to get. Um, I tried to get uh Steve Garvey on the show on the podcast here. I tried to get him. He's uh, obviously a great baseball player. Just running, and I was like, I, and even trying to find his stance on crypto, couldn't find it anywhere. So. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's probably not highlighted, but if you talk to him and you break it down, I'm sure he would be pro crypto only because he supports freedom. Yeah, providing blockchain. Uh, you know, this is this uh, this mission statement of theirs uh, over here on Fairshake. This is that it said uh, Fairshake supports candidates committed to securing the U.S. as the home to innovation, building the next right. generation of the internet, providing blockchain innovators the but ability that's not to develop. Adam their yeah, that's not <laughs> further from yeah. the truth. Not pro the exact business. Polar, right. The exact censored opposite in, of what that Congress for lying. Was. Openly yeah. lying about a phone call that never happened, injected all the stuff, and then the phone call was released and it was complete made up garbage. Uh fair shake and is that's, a federal that's who you're giving a million dollars to. Yeah, a federal independent expenditure only committee registered with the federal election committee and supports candidates solely through its independent activities. But again, yeah. you know, if you look at the news here, it's all from twenty twenty three. There's like there's nothing even like there's nothing going on with this with this org. No, no, uh, it was just a it was a it was a money move. That's all it was. They set up this fair shake just so they could get money into the hands of the politician that they wanted to give it to. The rest yeah. of it, it it's a, you know that's and that's the shell game of uh, of politics. You saw it. You saw it right there live. 
You know, it's, it's kind of a, the pathetic aspect. And they're utilizing this whole notion of being pro-innovation, pro-crypto, so they can move money to the uh, candidate of their choice you, you know, with a huge sum of money that goes beyond the uh, max contribution. That's all. Yeah, look at this. Here's an article from uh, February 21st, 2024. Uh, Crypto Super PAC Fair Shake raises 4.9 from the Winklevoss yeah. twins. Right, so great. A fair Shake raised more than 85 million to support leaders. Yeah, crazy. Why don't you give 10 million to John Dean right now, or 20 million? Exactly. Blow it out. Yeah. Put him in Why Congress. would they give it to the fraud? They're get, They're either. Well, they're either trying to pay him off. So that he votes their way, which is, I doubt he yeah, would. This is why I'm calling you know, this a fraud organization. Pro. You have $85 yep. million. Dollars, we have an election cycle. Correct. And you're not putting $10 million in the coffers of John Deaton. How about $20 million to take That's out right. anti Get rid of Elizabeth Warren. Uh, yeah, the, the one. Queen. The kingpin. The grifter. That's right. The queenpin. <laughs> and you know what? It's so funny. If you look at her activity on Twitter prior, or actually I should say prior to Deaton announcing, it was spotty. Now she's on there every other day doing this, doing that. She's a she's a classic straw, you know. She creates that sort of straw person that we're we're, we're going to rally against yeah. this. Like, no, no, you're the one that's there in Congress. It's not some outside entity. It's you. But like, oh, she complains about this complaint, but we complain about it. Okay, but you're actually in Congress and can do something about it. So she's authored a bill to do this and authored a bill to do that. She's been completely, you know, um, she can offer to do whatever she wants, right? She doesn't and, do anything. She, she never here does. Here it is, anything. Andreessen Horowitz. Um, Ark Invest, so that's Kathy Wood, um, as well as yep. crypto companies like Circle, Ripple, Coinbase, and more. And who are they supporting? Mm -hmm. uh, right. They spent millions, Jeff, millions opposing California Senate candidate Katie Porter. You have got yep. to be kidding me. This is a well, sham organization. Awesome. This is another, that's this is another movement of money. blue. Yeah, well, this is the new FTX. It looks like a super PAC. It's like the old FTX was right. like you just give money to to a, that country in battle with that other country. Let's not say it. And then they, <laughs> they give that money back to FTX, and FTX funnels it into Donated the politicians. To the, to the it's called politician. money laundering. Yeah, like you said, it's called money yeah. laundering, right? According it's, it's to It's crazy. Open 85 million. 85 million. That's a shit yeah. ton of money. And it just it's it's just so crazy. That we're seeing the inner workings of how they they fund and finance political candidates of their choice and it's a payoff that's all that's just movement of money to pay people up nothing to do with crypto but is going to be everything to do with other things that they're trying to seek objective with but adam schiff is the last person you would think they would spend all that money to unseat him and everybody else and say you know what we've had it with the blue team because each one of these representatives has done everything in their power to oppose innovation and oppose the development of the crypto space and our anti-business. So, you know, and that's across the board. So these are payoffs for whatever they had them do. So obviously Adam Schiff must have done something behind the scene to help with who knows what he did. Uh, but there, there's something I bet if you dig, we dig deep enough, you could probably find there was some legislation that it's, you know, uh, and, and it just won't be a hundred percent relevant to uh, or related to uh, crypto specific then he comes out with this fake statement of being pro crypto pro innovation uh, so it's so yeah. crazy but you know who is you know pro crypto and pro innovation and wants to make things happen is john deaton and you know we're obviously talking about him but this is such an amazing statement crypto eddie had posted that article that we already covered but the statement from john deaton this this tells you everything and this is the differentiator between john deaton and elizabeth warren and all the other you know clowns that are that are out there on the blue team but you look at john deaton with this statement i've beaten the odds as an underdog my entire life and i'm gonna do it again the only difference this time the world gets to witness it we'll get to witness it and this is that's such a powerful statement because elizabeth warren pretended to be the underdog uh but she she uh, stole another culture and she you know, basically benefited her entire life from the stolen culture uh, that she uh, misappropriated. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's the direction. But she claimed to be the underdog, which she never was. And, but, but here is John D. We know his story. We know, exact, you know everything that has gone into it. And he's won every single time. And we see what he did just on behalf of uh, 
of the XRP community with that intervention. And if it wasn't for his intervention and bringing 75,000 people on board to help intervene, the court case could have gone a completely different direction because that decision, especially on the XRP and the holders, and, and now we're probably going to see even more involvement of that reputation. It's that the individual investors weren't harmed like the SEC said they were. Right. And the individual investors of the XRP asset had nothing to do with Ripple and they had nothing to do with Ripple shares. And it's a complete, uh, di you know, there's obviously two different uh, two different lanes here. But the fact that you have the community coalescing together, say, hey, you know, here here's what we we want the opportunity to invest in what we want to invest in. And that's the XRP and that's XRP and the XRPL. Ripple is going to do whatever Ripple is going to do. And, but that made such okay. a major impact on this historic case and it, it, and here we are today you know this Look is this really show. amazing here's confirmation there uh, you go it's it's spent 10 million dollars okay and look million. at this Look at this lot. Look at the buying statement right here fair shake pack spends millions opposing progressive senate candidate known for tough stance she's known for the tough stance if there's one right, person yeah. even if you're not even familiar if you're just mildly in crypto you just sort of happen to buy some bitcoin it sort of happened right even yeah. if you bought a meme coin, you kind of know the per the one person is not – no one's talking about Katie Porter in the house. No one is talking about her. What they're talking about is Elizabeth Warren. Everybody knows that she's anti-crypto queen, right? Everybody knows this. But there were they spent $10 million. So this is a sham organization. It's a partisan organization. Mm -hmm. They're full of shit. And uh, we, did, we did bring this up to John Deaton. I'm not going to talk about that conversation. But we did bring it up. Um and, 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 you know, I, I just think we, we as a crypto industry have got, yeah, sure, Jeff, we'll reach in our back pocket and plop, plop 10 or $20 million, or we'll get after this organization to do the right thing and call them out every possible way we can. Listen, that's it. All they have to do is make it right. That's if you're a true nonpartisan organization, then plop down at minimum 10 million to John Deaton's campaign. Now, what they that's may be waiting for. for, now, what they may be waiting for, and this would make a lot of sense, is what they're waiting for before they actually contribute would be making sure that once Deaton makes the primary, then they'll jump in. I don't think well, they're yeah. going to, but still you think they would, have. You, you, they're not, they're, they might not do it in, before. Cause right. So now the thing was, is that the difference here is though, is that Katie Porter was running in the primary against mm -hmm. Schiff. So, right. you know, you had Adam Schiff running against that in the primary. So obviously yeah. Adam Schiff won. This is a scenario where right. you don't, you don't John Deaton's running unopposed, right? He's basically going to probably win the primary for the Republican side, right? I don't believe that one guy that was gonna jump in the plant, the Elizabeth Warren plant, had pictures. Once those photos oh, surfaced yeah. to him with the bot with not it was no it was with Biden and, and with uh Warren. Yeah, that was it, the end of that. Pretty much the end of that. It was kind of like gotcha, didn't take you know, much. Checkmate. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um and so, but they, that's probably what they're waiting for, but I would at least like them to talk about it. I would at least like them to say, Hey, you know, <laughs> we're, we're behind a John Deaton. I mean, the one guy that took on the sec, cause I love that when he talked about it, he's like, Hey, he, when he was with his girlfriend, he's like, she's like, he disappeared for four hours. What happened to you? And he's like, I think I'm going to sue the sec. <laughs> well, he did. <laughs> yeah, and he, yeah. it, it, you know, and he made a name, but he did it all pro bono stuff, by the way, all those filings, all that work, all that effort. All pro bono, man. He did it because he said it was wrong. He even said at the time that XRP wasn't even his biggest bag. But he said even if he didn't own XRP at all, any of it at all, he would have done it because it was the That's overreach right. of the government. It's the right to thing to do. To tweak them, right? Yeah. And look at what DK, DK is saying. Wonder how much Brad Larson Schwartz gave to the pack. Those guys uh, need to give damn near a billion, in my opinion, uh, to Deaton because he, he, Deaton saved them. He, well, they really... They really well, should the look, about, and they did max out. They maxed out personal contribution. That's what we that's what we talked about. Out. Yeah, the thirty three hundred. Like go point it yeah. out. Thirty three hundred. So they stepped primary. up. They stepped up for them. But I would like super, to see the pack step up. Super PAC could give fifty million if they wanted to. They could. Oh yeah, they could. They could, could fund his campaign. That Elizabeth Warren will be done, even though she's sure. already done. They would. They would. Yeah, they would. They would absolutely destroy her, and that's why she's nervous. She's very nervous. Uh, oh. Just getting out raised, and to me. You know, everybody who chipped in five bucks, 10 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever, look, it makes a difference. You know, John That's Deaton right. had a goal to raise by December, by March 31st to raise 1 million. And he, he broke, the, he shattered it. 
that's because of you guys. That's because, and, and so many of you live outside the U.S. and can't donate anything. But I always said this, like, you want to support John? Buy his book. Buy five copies of it and give it to people. Because if anything, it's an inspiration it to an overcoming inspiration. massive challenges, you know, without spoiling the book. But some of the things, I mean, some of the things that, you know, John Deaton overcame, it's just, it's, it's some unthinkable stuff, you know, and watching your best friend get, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it, it, if anything, it'll inspire somebody to get off their ass and do something positive in their life. So go buy five books from them and give them to your friends. I mean, that's how you can do it. it. Joe, Bud, I'm donating 1776 to the Deaton campaign today. It's not much, but I hope to do it until I reach 3,300. You got to love this. Like the way you think, Joe. There you I go. like the way you but think, Chip, we're, we're on time here. We got we to gotta wrap this. We got to wrap this. Yep. We're getting out of here. Be back again over tomorrow, time, right? 8 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Standard Time. Started early and went over. So it was yes. really great. Tomorrow was and we've half got, hour early. We actually, yeah, we'll start <laughs> throw everybody off completely. We actually have Crypto Queen joining us. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to we have an amazing show tomorrow night. So be very, very cool. Welcome back to the country, Chip. It's good to have you here in the U.S. Outside it's good to be here, but I got to tell you, I, have a, those, I got to tell you, the people of Canada, good people, good, great good hearts, people. Great in the and right place, food. and and you know, it's they, um, they're they're fighters too. They are fighters, yeah. and um, I do, um, I do love their spirit. And I got to tell you, man, that's uh, met a lot of amazing people there, and you know, it's just again, Montreal is a cool mm -hmm. city, um, great food, great culture, great everything. I really enjoyed enjoyed it there. I enjoyed the people. But, um, you know, I feel like Canada is like our second home. It's so close to us. Um, I grew up over the border. I spent a lot of time in Ontario. You know, my, a lot of my family migrated from Canada. And I feel like it's, uh, out of all the other countries out there, I feel like a real kinship to it. I want to see Canada succeed. And I want to mm -hmm. see, I mean, people in Toronto, dude, can't, I mean, a, a, a shack, a shotgun shack on the side of the road is $1.4 million. Yeah, there you go. It's, Man, do you see that camera moving? That's my laptop being moved by the wind. Is it? <laughs> Oh, I hope it doesn't blow away. Jack. I'm not even touching. I'm not touching the table. Well, I got to tell you, flying in last night, I wanted to, I want to talk about turbulence. Luckily, I was playing some really heavy rock music. I was playing some Metallica. <laughs> and the plane was like, and it was dropping, and it was shaking all over the place. And people were gasping. And I was just smiling because I was like, it sounded so cool with the music. <laughs> Master of Puppets. Right? I was like, <laughs> oh, <there you> <laughs> <go>. <laughs> and it was just, and I turned it up super loud. And it was like really fun yeah. to, to but I, I mean, I've been on enough planes to know that, you know, that's not a big deal. But people were freaking awesome. out and, and white knuckling awesome. the seat, <laughs> the, the armchair <laughs> control. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of, it was, it was crazy, man, yeah. coming in last night. But yeah. that's all we have, right, guys. We got we will, I got night, we'll see you guys here at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We'll also be on Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time, and next Saturday, 8 a.m. So oh. it's 8, 8, and 8. And, um, 8, 8, and 8. Sometimes 8, and 8. 8, 8. Week, yeah. Sometimes guys, we'll 8, 8, 8. On the next one, Chip and Jeff out. 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 Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops. <laughs>